Hey guys, Dave Games Master here, showing you how to install MSI Afterburner and its features. This is basically an updated video of the last video I made on MSI Afterburner, where I really didn't have much of a clue of what I was doing. So, <laughs> here we go, we've got an updated one. First of all, you're going to need to install MSI Afterburner. Now go to their website, download it, it'll come in a zip folder, folder which you will need to use RINRA Archiver or 7-zip which is a free alternative basically just run it there will also be another executable in here called combustor you don't need that that can be done later just download MSI Afterburner it will then install it may take a while depending on your computer specs and then you'll get it here run as administrator you do need administrative rights to make any changes and this window will pop up just like before Essentially what this does is it helps you overclock your graphics card in a more user friendly manner. So you've got your sliders here, you've got, well, easier settings I suppose. Um, what I recommend you doing is using the original software that came with your graphics card if it ever had any. That's the problem. Some graphics cards don't have overclocking software with them, such as Sapphire Tricks, which is basically when your graphics card is made by Sapphire. If you don't, don't worry, this is why MSI Afterburner is here. This basically allows you to overclock and in some cases underclock your card. Uh, in this instance I'm actually going to downclock since so I can't actually overclock it anymore unless I use my original software. So if I knock this back down to 1000 MHz, or 1002 it will have to be. Um, memory clock can stay the same and we'll save it in a profile so we'll save it there and now that has saved this basically means you can set multiple profiles and then choose which one you want at the beginning of a gaming session depending on what game or if you're just using your graphics card for normal use normally graphics cards will downclock themselves depending on the usage so don't worry too much So you click apply and now it should be applied. Um, to double check this, as I say, if you have your original software you can use that just to check. Ah, tricks. As you can see it's underclocked. I'm basically just showing you that to show you that it actually works and that it will make a change on your computer. This will essentially mean that your games may appear to run slower if it's being held by back the graphics card. This core clock speed basically means how fast everything loads. So when you're playing like a game of Battlefield on max graphics, it's gonna make an impact on how fast your graphics card actually is. So all the memory clock, that basically means how fast and how quick and efficiently textures are loaded and unloaded from the VRAM on board. So that's basically video random access memory. Um, you don't really need to know about that, but you might as well. That will basically determine how many textures can be held at high resolution and then deposited on screen as an image that you see that you're running around on. So the higher this is, the better. You can say the same for both of them. Basically, 1000 MHz is 1 GHz, so if you overclock to 1 GHz, you are going to effectively have a much faster gaming PC or machine for, with graphics than a half a gigahertz um, core clock speed which would be 500 megahertz that's basically what overclocking is <laughs> so what you want to do is when you've saved your profile or whatever you can find it down here again you want to keep an eye on your temperature don't let it get over its recommended or max temperature specs you can find yours out on the internet So. I type in that, which is my card. You can go to the first link you find, say, and there you go. Safe temperature would be about 85 degrees, but keep it under 80. You know, it's pretty safe. So what you want to do is you, if you've got a second monitor, just drag it over. What you want to do is keep an eye on your temperature. Don't let it get too high. You run into risk of damaging your card. The same can be said for the voltage. 
you don't really want to go playing around with that because you can cause a lot of problems. So keep it relatively safe using um, performances that you know your card can go up to. That will basically be the video for it for today. Don't forget to like and comment if you have any issues or theories or whatever, I don't know, whatever you type in comments so I'll read anyway. <laughs> so yeah, do that and I hope this helps and clears up a couple of problems from my last video I made. Uh, thanks a lot. See you.